Well, hello, friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome to the Nook. We're going to do a journey's end. That means I've actually got 20 whiskeys. I'm going to try to walk through, really give you the highlights and let you know, you know, what I buy this again, what I not. Um, you know, the idea of this journey's end is that bottles speak a story. Some of them are quick, some of them are longer, but all of them evolve a little bit with experience. Uh, with this many whiskeys, I can't really give you the deep insights. So it's really the highlights of that story. Uh, but I love sharing these. This was, of course, inspired by uh, Roy Aquavite with his recycled reviews. He is the best, the originator. Please go check him out, Aquavite on YouTube. But here I will give you my thoughts on 20 whiskeys. And I will try to do it in less than 20 minutes. Three, four. Let's get going. I actually have more scotch than anything else, but we'll start with some bourbon. So first up is Four Roses Small Batch. You know, I've had some single barrels from Four Roses that I've really loved. This small batch it took a long time to really say, you know, what, pretty good bourbon, but overall it was dry. It didn't have enough fruit layers for me. And I, I really wanted more, especially with their unique yeast uh, strains and there's like you know four different varieties in here this is a, a you know a, a whiskey to geek out over but in my market for the price it didn't deliver enough flavor good bourbon just not enough to keep me and i probably won't buy it again now i'll go over to actually a newcomer in my market this is boulder spirits now this one is their sherry cask finish so it is a bourbon but a significant portion of barley and i, I really find that nut, barley, um, kind of cereal grain forward note, unique and, and a less than the, the strong bourbon corn. I like this one. And it, it really tastes a little closer to single malt sherry finish than in true bourbon, but a great introductory. And I've already bought this again. So it's like my second bottle. Um, Oh, I guess uh, the only other bourbon I have is this uh, Bullet Bourbon Barrel Proof or Barrel Strength. Uh, you know, released at, what, 58.3%. I was genuinely surprised by this. I like uh, uh, Bullet. I know it's sourced. I know it gets beat up a lot on, on, uh, on sites of high quality, but I don't mind it. And it's affordable and it's fun. Uh, this really surprised me and in a blind. Uh, it had a lot of strong oak and yet balanced with some like dark cherry in it. Really liked it. And and because of that surprising, if this stays at a good price, because it tends to be overpriced, I'll buy it again, but only at a good price. Um, that's it actually for bourbon that's finished right now, which is crazy. Uh, but I'll go over to American Rye. You know, this is Pikesville. Uh, straight rye, 110 proof. Pikesville is an absolute delight if you enjoy rye. And if you're just getting into rye and you want to reach for something a little higher quality, this Pikesville balances um, the spice, the pepper, um, the little bit of menthol, grass notes, with, with a little bit of sweet corn, a little bit of almost those bourbon-esque notes. Clearly it's a rye. I don't want to, I don't want to steer you otherwise but it is a full and rich rye certainly worth trying out um if i can get it for a good price i will absolutely buy another bottle of pikesville we're going to jump into scotch we're going to start with aberfeldy 12. you know aberfeldy 12 is uh probably the backbone of the uh, doers uh, john doers and sons line and and i i like doers and they continue to put out some pretty cool stuff for a really affordable dollar value. This Aberfeldy is also affordable and, and I actually like it. It's very sweet scotch. It's honey, a honeysuckle, uh, a cut fruit, cut pear, um, and, and a good release. 40% chill filtered, colored, 
it's got a lot of knocks against it and it's been creeping up in price, which means while I enjoy this, I almost get the same flavors going to a doer's and they are half the price. So for a single malt, it's good, but I'm not going to replace it. So here's a, a Glen Morangy. You know, Glen Morangy, they call themselves Highland Single Malt. I believe they qualify as a space side as well. Uh, I think uh, one of the originators in terms of cask finishes and this they take a nice sweet light fruit forward scotch and then try different finishes so this is the la santa sherry cask a 12 year old nice to have an age stamp 43 percent in my market could be colored could be chill filtered it's too bad that that happens but for a good sherry malt i enjoy the flavors on this um a little more rich fruit than some of the, the leather dark oak that can get in sherry. So if you're looking for a little more uh, lively, you know, fruit forward sherry, this, is, you can't go wrong. And and you know what? I like it. And I'm quite sure La Santa will find itself on my shelf again. Uh, so here is an integrity malt. This is the Altmore 12 year old. So this is a natural color, non-chill filter. Um, Altmore 12 and I wanted to like this a lot because it's integrity and it's a good price. It's a good $20 less than that La Santa. And while it, you know, it did have some nice fruit notes. Um, it had an okay balance of kind of a, a cereal sweetness. Uh, it, it just it wasn't very lively and and I and I wanted more for a 46% integrity release. Now it's a it's a good scotch. It's a solid scotch. And and I might buy it again one time, but for you guys, recommendation just just my palate and flavor wise, it, it ended up being kind of a nondescript scotch. And I have many of those. And so like I'd rather buy the La Santa, even though I probably colored and chill filter but the flavor was rich and delicious this was good and average so for me i'm probably not going to do this apologize for all of you uh, malt heads out there because clearly i should only recommend integrity releases i'm going to go over to uh compass box you know compass box is a blender uh, they also age after blend or before blend their own scotches but they're not a distillery uh, Jog Glazer, he just produces good stuff. This is a 43% Oak Cross. I took my time with this one. When I talk about a bottle telling a story, this is one of those bottles. Um, I, I ended up probably liking it. Well, f I did like it far more than when I started. When I started, it was a disappointment, especially with the title oak cross you would think okay look i'm gonna have because it's got american oak french oak this is going to be oak dominant but for me it wasn't it was a, a decent you know space side style scotch which is good but i wanted a little more oak balance having said that there was an interesting oak and then fruit note that really came in the bottom quarter of this bottle doesn't happen to every bottle but for me that was cool it was too long coming and I don't think I'll buy it again, but I was surprised where the journey took me with this Oak Cross. Now staying with John Glazer and Compass Box, here is a classic. This is um, Spice Tree. Now I, I was positive, 46%, that this had some sherry in it. And I've been told by far better connected people, there isn't any X sherry in here. I, I'm, I'm surprised because when I read through the oaking and the, the quality, if you haven't done that before, if you're thinking of buying a compass box, go to their website, download their recipe sheet. It's just phenomenal to see, you know, percent of this, percent of that, this style cask, that style cask. And, uh, you know, there was some refill hogshead, which I'm like, isn't that only sherry? But I've been told there's not X sherry in here. However, natural, non-chill filter, 46%, and a nice balance of some spicier um, 
Christmas spice, a little bit of pepper even with uh, some of those nicer orchard fruit, um, Highland or Speyside scotches. Spice tree for me is an excellent scotch. And if you have not had it, but you like scotch, you're looking to explore or, or try something with a, a little more backbone, Spice Tree to me is an absolute recommend and I will buy it again. Coming over to, uh, okay, I guess this is my, no, it's not my last scotch. Well, but it's here. This, I've I've talked too many times to you guys. This Krigalaki 13 year old, 46%, pretty sure it's unchill filtered, not sure if it's, um, natural color, but this is a cool scotch for my palate. By that, all the good rich scotchness, but it adds a little bit of funk, a little bit of, you know, is it smoke? Is is it like there's no peat in here, but that edge of, wait, there's something deeper going on. Uh, I just what I like about this is full flavored richness, good nose. I actually get quite a bit of fruit, but the fruit is edge of edge of tropical pineapple, mango, that kind of thing. And then there's a little bit of uniqueness. And where I am in my journey, a unique scotch always catches my attention. And certainly for the price, this Kregalaki will absolutely be back on my shelf. Um, got a couple of, uh, well, I've got one big scotch here. Uh, this is Glen Farkless 15. Now, what's nice about this is they released it at 46%. Glen Farkless to me uh, really is a great house if you're trying to find a sherry that either has edges of sulfur. Now, I'm not that sensitive to sulfur, but certainly has a sherry profile that's balanced by old, musty, growly oak. I like this one. This one to me, um, when I say journey, it started pretty good and it stayed good and it has become a favorite. I see it often for a decent value still. I don't know how long that will last. So for as long as I can get this, you know, Canadian for $80, this absolutely deserves a place in your shelf. Full sherry, dark sherry, edge of sulfur if you're sensitive to that. But I think this will tell you a great story. Uh, since I, I've got talking big, big sherry, I'm actually going to talk about this Old Perth. You know, Old Perth cast strength 58, 58.6, that kind of thing. Non-chill filter, natural color, and actually about the same price as that Glen Farkless 15. It is a bit more a bruiser. It is a, a little bit more aggressive. It has more alcohol presence because no doubt that it's younger. And not just that it's 58. I'm just saying it's, it's likely... Um, younger, but it kind of reminds me of uh, a Glen Farkless, actually a little closer to the 105. This is a really good release. Now I've had several uh, cast strength full sherry drams lately that play in this price and I actually like some of them a bit better. However, this is awesome and I would absolutely buy it again. Uh, another cast strength. Uh, this is Tomatin. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, there's no age stamp, I don't think. Nope. So cast strength, this one's about 57 and a half. It's both X bourbon and X sherry. This is not a complicated scotch. It is fruit forward, uh, possibly from that sherry, but also like it, it, the fruit doesn't feel leathery. Like, like if I were to compare it to, uh, where was I here? Like, like this has all the classic sherry, right? Little edge of red grape or some X prune, that kind of stuff, right? That's not this. Uh, it really just feels more like a fruit basket and bold. Boldness. It's very strong. And in my market, it's about 60 bucks Canadian. And for $60 Canadian, if I'm looking for a strong scotch that I just, I just want to sip slowly, I only want to pour once and, and watch the whole show next to my wife. This would be a good pick. Not much story on this. It started full fruit strong, ended full fruit strong. Not a lot of spice, not a lot of oak, but it's good. And at the price point, I would buy it again. That's it for a scotch, I believe. Oh, no, I've got one more here. This is um, Finlagen. 
This is supposed to be sort of their cast strength. Well, it says cast strength. It's 58%. You know, it doesn't um, have an age stamp and it's full of Isle of Malt. It could be in the past year I've fallen away a little bit from my absolute love of peated scotch. This is good, but it it just never got off farther from burnt beech wood, a little bit of brine, but a lot of ashtray. It just, I needed something more. I needed a second act or a deeper story, and I never got it from this. Now, in the comments when I reviewed this, there are several people that just love this bottle, and I can see why. It's 58% you know, full Isle of Single Malts, and, and it's decent price absolutely maybe 70 bucks canadian 80 bucks somewhere in there that's a really good price but it never captured my attention it's it's journey's end is sort of riding off in the distance going huh okay for me i'm not buying it again now that's the end of my scotch i've got very few international it's been a weird last few months in terms of finishing bottles so i'm gonna talk about this hide it's an irish but it's sourced this is the president's cast 10 years single malt uh sherry cast non-chill filtered i believe it's 46 yeah 46 percent um i enjoyed this i i've read reviews that really kind of knocked it pretty hard but for me uh well you know it, it is irish which is which is great um but it tends to taste a little bit like a nice sherried single malt. In fact, you know, this 10 year old 46% actually kind of reminds me of, well, I was going to pull up a bottle, but of a sherried single malt more than an Irish. Now it's got a little more buttery sweetness, a little more honeyed notes. Um, I, I think I would catch it as an Irish, but it tends to be a little toward a scotch. So if you're looking for a true Irish triple distilled profile, I'm not sure you'd get it here. Looking for a good sherried malt? Yeah, this is a decent bottle. Will I buy it again? You know, I probably won't because I tend now to buy Irish for Irish. And if I want a scotch, I want a scotch. And this is a little bit confusing for my palate. So then the other international that I have is this Millstone Oloroso Sherry. Now I've talked about this many times over the year. It's, uh, I think, 46 as well, 46 natural, unchill filtered, and it is a monster for my palate. It is like so sherry forward, but it backs it up with some nice spices, uh, a little bit of tannic oak, not, not a lot, but just a little bit, and good chewy mouthfeel. This is a wonderful single malt. I... I really, um, I don't, I should stop talking because I'll end up uh, recommending it too high. Now, it is very almost whiny, resinous sherry. So if you're not looking for that, if you really want a little more, look, I, I'd like the, the malt to speak a bit more. I'd like some barley sugars. I'd like really more oak. Then this is not a uh, recommend. But for me, if you know what you're getting into when you're looking for a really full, like what does wet sherry casks do? I imagine these were quite wet because this had a lot of it, but it was still balanced and I enjoyed it. This was a great bottle. Okay, I've got a couple of Canadians to kind of round this out. I'll do two here very quickly. They are from Shelter Point. Shelter Point's on Vancouver Island and they've been producing some excellent single malts now the first one here the forbidden is not that it is a wheat whiskey 47 percent, but it's got all the you know natural color non-shell filtration i respect them for putting this out for me it was too honey sweet white bread forgettable i just couldn't light this up and i, I, I there were times when i'm like okay this isn't too bad you know and 47 percent and you know all the right things and but for me it, it was too light now if you like more traditional canadian but would like a cleaner profile a little nicer mouse mouth feel without like acetone or alcohol forward i think you could enjoy this this is kind of like canadian whiskey done really really well even though it's a wheat whiskey instead of you know traditionally corn but 
I just didn't like this one so much, so I'm not buying this again. This, on the other hand, is completely different. This was their single malt, 57.5%, finished or aged exclusively, I don't know, in French oak. This was very oak forward, told, told the story of spicy, nutty, aggressive oak. And I like that story. It was um, not, not the rich palette of Christmas cake, but it was savory, uh, dark spice drying on the palate and uh, and the story of this French oak from Shelter Point is worth trying. I would buy this bottle again in a heartbeat. Uh, I think I only have one, no, I've got two bottles left. Okay, we'll go really quick. This is Lot 40 Dark Oak. When I first had it, I had it with my cousins and thank you, cousin Sean. What a great gift. I liked it. Uh, dark fruit, uh, good flavors, little bubble gum, you know, it's 48%. And then it kind of faded away and I shot it against the regular Lot 40 and a few other ryes and I fell out of love with it. I thought, you know, for the price, I'd rather just bring Lot 40, um, the regular Lot 40 home. You know, it's a little, little more balance in the fruit, a little more um, toffee going on, whereas this is very very heavy cherry for me and again almost that bubblegum fruitness but it spoke up and I have another bottle in the back already because the bottom of this really had a richness that I've appreciated and and I think if you've had lot 40 and you haven't had the dark oak it's time to try it it's a little stronger 48 percent and it is for my palate a little thicker not chocolate but thicker dark cherry and and a nice balance of oak it's it's worth trying definitely um well i already have bought it again so then i'll wrap up with this last straw from a distillery uh well last straw distillery in ontario this is their cast strength rye i think it's their um was it their release two or release three i can't remember it's young it's only three years old uh, it says cast number two, 65.8%. This would be a polarizing rye, in my opinion. It has a lot of menthol, grass, herb, eucalyptus, but it also has a lot of nice cracked pepper, black pepper, um, hot, hot cinnamon, and a great quality mouthfeel. Like it just... I really like this. Like every time I poured this, I was uh, hoping there'd be just a little bit more. <laughs> I like the quote, I don't always drink whiskey, but when I do, it has to be cast strength. This to me is a classic cast strength rye whiskey. Yeah, it's a little bit herbaceous. If you don't like that, just stay away. If you do like it, this is a phenomenal rye and should be chased down. Thanks for joining me here. Uh, I can't believe I tried to cover 20 whiskeys and recall at least the highlights and then say whether I'd buy them or not. You know what? That's just a couple too many bottles to keep my head on straight. But maybe I gave you a few thoughts. Look, I've talked through all of these. I've given way better insights, comparison thoughts, and taken far more time to walk through nose palette finish than this. But it's fun to try to go through now that these bottles, well, they've finished their story. They're at their journey's end and I'm putting them in the recycle bin. Thanks for joining me. You guys take care.